Welcome back to the channel. I guess you couldn't get enough of good old evil deer. That's okay. I'm here whenever you need me. Just make sure you do your grinding or you know what happens. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question from one of my subscribers. The question being, what would I do if I was approaching learning a new language and it was day one? What would I do on day one? What would the evil deer do? Okay, I've actually thought about this quite a bit because there are other languages that I want to learn after Chinese. So next year is all dedicated to Chinese. And then the year after that, I'm thinking possibly Latin. Although it is over a year away and that may be pushed back. I may change my mind. You know, I may go for one of those random phases where I'm like, no, it's Klingon. We're doing Klingon, boys. You know, it's just, that's what happens with me. I'm, I'm pretty whimsical with my choices, but once I actually pick something, I kind of then stick to it. Now, I'm going to give examples based on Latin, but since Latin is a very interesting edge case and the fact that it's not like most other languages out there, it's not a majority living language, uh, I'm going to also use other languages as examples along the way about how I'd approach this. So the very first thing, I would do is decide what do I want to do with this language clearly now for me generally what I want to do is actually watch videos uh, have conversations and all those types of things in a language which obviously does not work so well with Latin which is majority written language now but that's what I generally like to do with languages so that's what I focus on and I generally don't focus on the written side which is going to be really interesting with Latin okay the very next thing I do is I figure out what sounds exist within that language that don't exist within my native language language. So that way I can figure out what I need to learn first because you always want to pick up the phonology of the language before you actually start memorizing things in it. Otherwise you're going to memorize things and you're going to memorize words and associate them with sounds that are actually not correct. And then it just becomes a massive pain in the ass down the road to try and rectify and fix. I've seen it many times before. You've all probably seen it where you'll see like English speakers who can't pronounce TH and it just makes them sound bad even though they, they're quite fluent with the language because they they never mastered the sounds from the beginning and then even if they learn it later on it's actually really hard to go back and change all of that over. I've actually gone through this experience with Esperanto. If you look at my super early Esperanto videos, I actually speak with a pretty heavy English accent and it took a long time for me to rectify that and kind of standardize it. And even to this day, there's sometimes where a little bit of English accent would just pop its head through and be like, hi boys. So that would be the very first thing that I would do is figure out the sounds and what I need to learn. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, that's actually quite easy. You just go to Google and you type uh, what sounds exist in example, Spanish that don't exist in English or XYZ language, you know, whatever other languages you've got, and you can narrow it down quite quickly. You do that with Chinese, you're going to figure out very quickly, well, obviously it's the tones, but then you've also got the Q, the X, the J, the R, and then a couple of vowels. There's a, there's a fair few sounds there. So you're going to want to focus on those before you go and do anything else. That's the end of day one, like right there, like, because you're going to be figuring out the sounds and then you're going to probably start practicing those languages. But let's just assume, for sake of argument, magically, I know all the sounds for this language. Great. Now we've got to figure out what actually accent we want. Funnily enough, the accent that you pick is also very important because that is probably got what's going to stick with you for the majority of your language life. So for example, if you're learning Spanish, well, do you want to speak more like a Mexican or do you want to speak more like someone from the continental Europe or, you know, some other South, uh, South American country? Or if it's like, for example, uh, even Latin, you got to pick, do you want to speak the church version of Latin? I forget the technical word for it. Or do you want to um, speak the reformed version or the, uh, is it the reformed? No, it's like, um, oh, it's a classical version anyway. So you still got to pick an accent and you got to work your way through that. And that can actually make a big difference for some languages. Like funnily enough, the accent differences between Australian English and American English are actually quite large. But for us native speakers, we don't notice it. But if you speak to anyone, for example, who's learned English in China, they'll generally learn maybe British or American English. If they come to Australia, they will completely be lost. They won't understand anything and it'll take them quite a while to actually adapt to our accent accent, probably because we can't be bothered speaking like the majority of our words in full form. We're just like, yeah, I'll give you half and half and half. But like, that's still an important thing you need to consider because you're going to be learning words and the way you pronounce those words is going to really depend on what accent you're trying to go for. And if you want to be like really authentic, you're going to focus on one specific accent. You will listen to others, but you'll focus on obviously pronounce, your pronunciation will follow one specific accent. Now let's assume you know exactly all that. You figured out the accent. What do you do then? Oh, well, that's quite easy. Now you've got the sounds, you've got the accent. Now all you got to do is start learning. So for a massive language like Chinese, English, uh, French, German, this is actually quite an easy process. What you're going to want to do is you're going to write down a bunch of sentences and you're going to get these translated into your target language. So first example of sentence would be, this is a cat. And then this is a dog. 
this is an elephant, this is a duck. And you notice here, I'm repeating a certain pattern here. This is noun. And then you also got a bunch of nouns that you're coming in here. And the reason why is you're gonna get these recorded in some form or another, and you're going to listen to these and you're going to repeat them. And what you're trying to do here is teach your brain that the this is part actually forms like a, a specific meaning. And then it realizes that the, the dog, the elephant, the, the cat part is just something else. It's like a noun. And it will figure out those differences. Now you start with this is and that that is because obviously when you start watching the most basic shows within a language being kids shows you're going to hear a lot of this is and that is now the next thing I recommend is learn the numbers 1 to 5 not specifically 1 to 10 you can learn those it doesn't matter but 1 to 5 is very common within every kids show the next thing you're going to learn is colors because that's another thing that will pop up in every single kids show you want to get to the most basic kids shows as fast as possible so you can listen to them and then you can practice your cards now I've already made a video on how to make cards for a massive language like Chinese, French, whatever, you can easily go to ChatGPT and you can ask it to translate these things and you can be pretty much certain that the translations are going to be correct. For a smaller language such as Esperanto, it will work but it won't be so precise. So you're best going to someone who actually speaks one of those languages or just skipping this phase and instead just trying to sentence mine from very basic Esperanto videos. There are basic Esperanto videos that cover just the colors and things like that. So you can just go there and sentence mine instead. It's a little less structured but it works. Um, uh, for a language like Latin, here's an issue. You can't just use ChatGPT. From what I've heard, it's an absolute mess when it comes to Latin, so you don't want to be doing that. So how are you going to do that? Because there's also not that many videos that are going to cover all these basics to the uh, to Latin itself in a way that's nice and structured. Well, for this type of language, what you're going to do is you're going to grab out the old PDFs, the old books, and you're going to look up the book uh, Lingua Latina and La Familia Romana. And these books here actually start super simple. They just don't start with colors and stuff like that. They start with, you know, like your family and the slaves you own. I know, highly relevant for today's day and age, but uh, it is what it is, okay? So you'll take these sentences and then you're going to get them in some way turned to audio. Now, this is the hard part for Latin specifically because there is no text-to-speech, well no good text-to-speech for it. So instead what you're going to have to do is actually learn the pronunciation. I know, this sucks. So how can you do that and be sure that what you're going to be uh, actually saying is good? Well there are several ways. One, there is videos where people have actually um, read these books out loud, like they made recordings so you can just go listen to them. Or you could just jump on a website like italki and find a Latin tutor and then just get them to read out basically the book for you and you can just record the whole thing and then chop it up later and listen to it and by the time you listen to it after like a fair bit you'll start to get the flow of the sounds and stuff obviously there's lots of little issues you need to be aware of you know accent location short vowels long vowels stuff like that but this is all just specifics to a language and every language has its like specifics that you need to worry about but anyway with the majority of languages this is actually quite an easy task you use chat gpt to create your sentences you use some random text-to-speech engine to create the audio for them and then you shove them into your cards and as long as you create enough templates uh, from the very beginning stages that focus on the most simple concepts that you will find in a kids TV show, you can listen to these cards and go watch the kids TV show, start mining the kids TV show, creating more cards, and then as you watch the show and you find more things you don't know, you keep doing this process backwards and forwards. Find things you don't know, look up chat GPT, get sentences, make templates, generate cards, then go back. And it's just a circle that goes around and around. Now I know I should probably make a separate video just for the second part of the conversation. But a lot of people have asked me about, well, how much should I be listening and how much should I be doing cards? Well, at the beginning, you're going to want to be doing like 90% on your just card study and then 10% on like listening to these videos because your brain is not ready for this language. So you really need to focus in and prepare your ears and your brain and everything for this language and let it know that these cards it's hearing are the ones that you've created. And then as you progress over time, so you start with like lots of cards, lots of grinding and very little like actual use within the language. But over time, this needs to shift. By the intermediate stage, you're gonna wanna be like 50-50. And then by the advanced stage, you wanna be doing very little grinding down here and the majority of it's actually just using the language and enjoying it. So the whole idea behind the cards is just to try and get you to that intermediate phase as fast as possible. And then in the upper stages when you're already advanced, the idea for the cards is to focus on those words which is still not very common but you still need in order to actually sound like native or at least have a very high degree within the language. Okay, that's the end of the video. I'll see you all in the next video and if you're not there, old mate Elmo will deal with you.